What's going on guys? T-Mart here. Welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 6. Here we go boys. We just completed the European Tour Series, so now it's time to move on and see what's next. Well here we go. Now, let's see what you can do in Grand Touring, the fastest road cars in the world. All right, so this is what I've been looking forward to, boys. This is where we're going to get into the Lambos and Ferraris and all kinds of stuff like that. Welcome to Volume 3 of this Let's Play. Looks like we're about halfway through. After this, we have Professional Racing and then Ultimate Motorsports. So we're going to see what we... Oh, wow. Okay. There's a La Ferrari. Give it to me. Oh, my God. Are you serious? That sucks. Oh my god, dude. A million dollar hypercar or $5,000. We got $5,000. Holy cow, that makes me want to cry. Sometimes our luck on those spins is just atrocious. Oh, it's bad. All right. So we're going to see what we're going to get into here, boys. Grand Touring. This is going to be a fun one. It's going to be a very expensive one. We're going to see what happens. These are the poster cars. The ones you had on your bedroom wall as a kid. Who knows? You might still have them on your wall. Because even if you're old enough to buy proper art in frames, it'll never look as good as the cars we have here. They're the ones we all dream of. The ones built in exotic places with top speeds and acceleration times that can literally take your breath away. Many of these cars are built with space-grade materials and push road car physics to the limits using race-derived technology. But even if you become immensely rich, you might still need to know the right people in the right places to be allowed to buy one. Others suit a more down-to-earth budget. But they all have a huge amount of power, and many will go way beyond 200 miles per hour. That's crazy, dude. All right, here Some we of the go. The very first auto races drove through fields, forests, and hilly countryside. The circuits in this series began as dirt roads and trails, evolving into exciting tracks with state of the art race engineering. Sounds good to me. Here we go. Wow. So we have Sport GT, Ultimate Grand Tour, Modern Hypercar, Vintage Touring, Birth of the Supercar. An exotic GT. Holy cow, dude. I want to go to Modern Hypercar, but we don't have that much money. We're low on monies, man. I think I think our best option might be to start off with like Sport GT and then maybe Exotic GT. And maybe just kind of like work our way up to Modern Hi like. I want to do modern hypercar so bad, we just we don't have the Meet money right now. the supercar killers. The cars that can hold their own against the world's most exotic machinery without sending your bank manager into cardiac arrest. With astonishing acceleration and enough grip to peel tarmac, they offer serious bang for your buck. And you might even see one in the real world, not just in music videos. I might even see one in my garage. Boom, there it is, the 2012 Nissan GTR Black Edition. Let's go, boys, I'm excited. We also have an Aston Martin V12 Vantage S. Let's see what other options we're gonna have in this, ooh, 26, or 2015 Corvette Z06, that's just disgusting. Vipers, Aston Martins, ooh. These are so, so ooh, look at that. The Cigaris, those are kind of interesting as well. All right, so I think, uh, I think we're going to start off with this, and we, we've got to go with the GTR, baby. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and upgrade it. How much is it going to cost us? 21,000 credits. I was going to say, it can't be that much. Here we go, boys. Oh, this is going to be exciting. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Let's go, boys. All right. Race one of six. We're going to be able to use three different cars. So we're going to use the GTR, the, what was an Aston Martin we also had in our garage, and then we're also going to use the, uh, the 2015... Um, V06. Or Z06. Your next V06. Race what I'm will talking be at about. Watkins Glen, historic site of the U.S. Grand Prix. All right. So, boys, this is going to be a good one. We're saving some money. We're going to start bringing up that bankroll, and uh, then hopefully we're going to be able to move in a hyper. Dude, if we would have been able to get that LaFerrari right off the bat, that would have been a fantastic start. 
to this set of races. I, I would have jumped straight in because we have one point like five million. So we can buy some of the hypercars, but we're not gonna get very far. And I don't wanna I don't wanna overdo it, you know what I mean? We're gonna take baby steps up there. So hopefully we're gonna be able to get it done. And so uh, we're starting off with my baby. Oh! This is exciting. 2012 Black Edition. When I went to buy my car, actually there were two options around the same price. There's a 2013, and they both had about the same miles on them. There's a 2013 Black Edition, or there's a 2015 Premium Edition. And I was really torn there. The Black Edition doesn't have any performance upgrades, though. A lot of people don't understand that. The Black Edition is simply different rims, uh, and then it's got Recaro racing seats in it, and it's got carbon fiber spoiler. Those are like the three main differences in between the Black Edition and the Premium Edition. So I went for the 2015, just because it's newer, it's gonna hold its value better and stuff like that. But uh, a lot of people, they don't understand the difference between that. The Nismo, obviously, or, or Nismo, whatever you want to call it. I always say Nismo, that's, the, it's just, that's what I've always called it, but technically it's the correct pronunciation is the Nismo. Uh, the Nismo obviously has enormous performance upgrades. But, instead of being like, I think there's like a 10 to 15 thousand dollar difference between Black Edition and premium, there's like a, a $50,000 job for Nismo. For Nismo. I gotta start calling it right. If you own it, you have to call it right. I just, ever since I was like little, I always call it the Nismo. I feel like that sounds cool. The Nismo. Nismo. There's no Z in there. Alright boys, we are pushing a buck sixty right now. That is nuts. Oh my gosh. Yo, six, not getting by me, son. You can't beat me on the straight. The Z06, I think it did beat the GTR on the Nurburgring. So, like, in terms of, like, cornering and stuff, it, it might be a little bit better, but it's not as fast tier to 60 in top speed, that's for sure. We're going to move into second place. Dude, we're so much faster than everybody else in the straights. That's crazy. This Corvette on the right is trying to creep up on us. Here we go, boys. We've got six laps on this track. Six laps to be able to catch up to this guy. We're about to catch up to him right now. This is a fairly easy track. It's a lot of straights. In the corners, you can kind of take a top speed. See ya. Man. This thing is just dirty, dude. Oh, my. I'm cheesing. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm, I've wanted one ever since I was a kid. Ever, ever since I watched Paul jump that R34 over the, uh, over the Super and Too Fast, Too Furious. It was my, my goal one day. It's been my, Phone background, it's been posters on my wall, it's been everything. Dude. Always wanted to race with it in all the games and I was little and stuff like that. Like it was a life goal to own this. I've even kinda cool. I've even got this. Look at this. It's a little model GTR. I've had this next to my desk for like or next to my computer for like five or six years now. Maybe not that long, maybe like four, three to four years. It's been three to four years. And so it's always like that motivation. It's like, do you want to make another video right now, Trev? I'm kind of tired. I would like to like go relax, go watch some TV or something like that. And then you see the little GTR and I'm like, no, nope. I'm going to keep hitting videos. Even sometimes when I don't want to, because I want to be able to be able to have that in my garage one day and I made it happen. It's pretty cool. It came to life, baby. This, I think it's one twenty-third scale car. So let that be, dude. Let that be mode. Like I just, if the coolest thing about the GTR, honestly, my favorite thing about it, like, I'm not gonna lie, it's fun to to turn heads and it's fun to like see people taking pictures of your car and stuff. But the coolest thing is when kids see it. Like that's that's. I have this where I used to live. There's this. Like neighbor kid, he would always freak out every time he saw it. There's one time it's really memorable to me. I was 
um, the cross guard, the crossing guard at an elementary school that came out and like put up their, their hands. And so I had to stop. But I was the first car in line. And all these little kids were like walking by like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, so cool. Oh, awesome car, dude, stuff like that. When I'm at gas stations and people see it and they're like, oh, that's such a nice car. It's like, I'm hoping that that's like motivation. That like, I want to I wanna own that car one day. Because I know seeing cars like that for me, like when I was little, when I would see a nice car, I'd be like, I'm going to work my butt off. I'm going to shovel so many driveways. I'm going to mow so many lawns. I'm going to do whatever I can to be able to own something like that one day. And I feel like, I feel like a lot of successful people, that was like their motivating factor was cars. Like I, I was listening, I listened to the, this podcast, the MF CEO podcast. Um, he's a guy, he started like a supplement company and he, um, like super successful. Has like a couple of Lambos, four GTs, like, you know, crazy, making millions and millions and millions a year. And he said that he thinks that if you want your kids to be successful, give them matchbox cars when they're little. Because cars, like, they influence people. They're like, you know, cars are an expensive thing and it's, it's not a necessity. Like, it, it's, it, it's not something you need in life. It's not like a house or something like that. You're like, you don't need a $100,000 car. But a lot of people that are motivated by that, it encourages them to, you know, pursue entrepreneurship and pursue controlling their own destiny and, like, thinking outside of the box and doing things outside of just a normal, like, regular day job. And uh, I totally agree with them. Like, I, just, I hope I'm... The bottom line of this, I'm kind of rambling at this point, we're about to, to lap somebody. That's crazy. But the bottom line of this is that I, just, I hope that when little kids see my car, that that, like, kind of instills in them, like, hard work will pay off. If you, if you work hard, you get a little bit of luck, and you, you know, do whatever it takes to, to chase success and, and be passionate about what you do, then you can be rewarded. So I hope that, I hope I can have a positive impact on other people's lives through me driving my crazy car. <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying. We are seriously gonna lap somebody in this GTR. That's, dude, where's the second place guy? I don't even know, like this is, I've been rambling this entire time, I haven't really been, this is an easy track. I don't know what it is. What is this, is that a Viper? I can't tell, he's still a little bit up there. Dude, we might lap three people on this race. This is gonna be the first time we've ever lapped somebody. That's a Viper, what are you doing, bro? Seriously? Dude, this is insane. We are literally half a track ahead of second place. We've been absolutely killing it in this thing, dude. This is the perfect track for it, too. Because it's, it's pretty much all straights, and that's what the GTR excels in. This turn right here is like the only big turn that you can take it full speed. We're still taking it at 90 miles an hour, YOLO. Everything else is just, it's long straights. This, we couldn't have picked a better car for this, this track. I want to try to lap three people. Wish that one a little bit too hard. Not going to be able to lap three people, but lapping one is an accomplishment in itself. Holy cow, this is disgusting. I feel bad for what I just did to these people out here. And now it's going to be time to get inside the whip. Dude, holy cow. We just destroyed that. 27,000 credits for that performance. 10,000 XP. Got some more Nissan Affinity level. And we're going to move on to the next race. Looks like we're going to Road America. Your next race will be at Road America. Attracting 800,000 visitors a year with over 400 events held annually. All right. We're going to use some of our boosts. I forgot our mods. We're going to get through those. We might think about buying a mod pack sometime soon, but I also I want to keep focusing on uh, on on saving money. Because that, that hypercar series is going to be coming up soon. So we want to make sure that we uh, keep that under control. All right. Here we go. So the Timberland series, Road America. See, uh, ooh, earn a super rare mod by hitting max affinity level with car manufacturers. That sounds pretty good. 
I'm wondering what the max affinity level is. We just use the GTR over and over and over and over and over and over. I'm down. All right, so we got a couple of empty mod slots here. I'm gonna say, let's go ahead and do plus 15 affinity. Nah, why not? All right, cool. Inside the GTR, let's go, boys. That car over on the left, that thing's sick. Look at that. Oh, dude, it's just so fast. Every other car we've raced, at the very start, we, like, we get shown up. Like, we'll start in, like, 10th place and end up in 15th because all the other cars have faster acceleration than us. Not the case today. We're just immediately jumping up five, five spots. We can come out of corners like a bat out of hell, dude. J Bay's plays. Or J Blaze plays. I like your uh, GTR choice. Sounds like he might have a Let's Play channel. I don't know. Never heard. None of my friends. Like so. It's funny how they put like people on your friends list and then they also incorporate people who aren't. So it's like... It's weird. Even a little bit high here. We're gonna be alright. We're cool. We're cool. We're good. What do we have? We got three laps in this track. Why are we slowing down right there? That was not a turn you slow down on. Alright, we're in the fourth place. Good. I was a little bit nervous about that one, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit worried about us coming out in the positive side of that turn. I don't know what constitutes a perfect pass in this game. We're getting plus 2,000 for every perfect pass, though, so that's good. I feel like we shouldn't get out into first and hold first place the entire time to try to make up for that. We can only get up to 12,000 credits though, so it's really not that big of a deal. This Corvette's hanging in there, dude. He's doing a good job. We're about to pass him though. Break too much in that last one. Just to catch up a bit. Excuse me. Just trying to get through. Let's go, boys. Oh, we got the straight. We got the straight away right here. It's so crazy. This is like, it's exactly what the inside of mine looks like. It's like we got white. White trim and stuff. One of the things, like the, the biggest thing that I still can't get used to about mine, and something I never thought I'd have in a car that I own, is the color contrast stitching. I don't know what it is. It, it's like the, the the dash, like the dashboard. You know, most cars are just like a, a plastic epoxy type material. It's leather and it's got white stitching in it. It just, it looks so like luxurious. And I just, I never expected I would have a dash that looked like that. I don't know, and it's like the weirdest thing to think about because there's like, like the, the carbon fiber rear diffuser and the, you know, ceramic brakes and stuff like that, like there's so many little things that are just super badass about the car. But the one thing that tends to stand out to me the most is the leather on the dash and the, the white contrast stitching that matches the rest of the interior. It's it's a weird a weird thing to be excited about, but that always I'm always like, oh this is such a cool car. Not because it goes zero to sixty with one of the fastest times in the world, not because it's a freaking hypercar killer and it's just an absolute mammoth of a machine. It's the it's the stitching on the dash. That's what gets me. <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing. Starting to pull away again. We really. Ooh, 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 ooh. That worked out better than expected. That could have been much, much, much worse. That could have been fantastically worse, dude. Oh my gosh. 
I think we might have actually gained some ground on those guys from that. But um, this track isn't as uh, GTR friendly. I mean, it's still obviously, I mean, any track's GTR friendly, but not quite as much as that first one. That first one killed it. Thought I'd be moving on to lap number three, boys. Straight here. So fast. We're about to hit the top speed I've ever hit. 165. There it is, right there. I've done this right here in my in my car. I want to take it. I've heard the. You guys know like the 2000 plus. Horsepower, horsepower um, Alpha Omega GTR. They took that where they got the top speed time. It was over in Cape Canaveral, and they used the NASA Space Shuttle landing strip, which is a four-mile-long runway that's just completely flat, completely open. Like that's where they hit the top speed with that thing. And I want to know how they did that. Like I want to take mine up. Obviously, I would never be able to do that. Like you wouldn't get clearance to do that for just like a normal. But I want to find some sort of like long runway or something like that. Like I'm sure they have like races and stuff you can do on old runways. I just, I want to take it somewhere where I know I'm safe. I'm not endangering myself or any other people. And I can just let it fly and try to hit that. I think 192 or 194 top speed. That would be pretty cool. Or maybe do a little bit of tuning to it to be able to be able to join the 200 club. Not many people can say that they're in the, the 200 mile an hour club in a car, especially a car that they own. So that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. It probably wouldn't take much to be able to get up to that. I've been thinking about getting a, a more aggressive exhaust on it just because it doesn't, it, it's not a very aggressive sound. Like the GTR, the, the stock GTR kind of sounds like a blender. It's, I mean, it sounds, it's good, but it doesn't, it doesn't have that super aggressive race sound, kind of like this does right here. So I want to get a slightly more aggressive sound. And uh, that'll also add, I think it adds around like 70 horsepower, the one I was looking at. So that'll help out a little bit. And um, I don't know, there's a bunch of it. There's like tuning packages you can do to it. that range from five grand to 50 grand. And oh, dude, there's one. I think there's one that the best bang for your buck is 20 grand. And that's a lot. But it raises it up from 545 horsepower to like 850, I think, or something like that. Like that's just, oh dude. It's already, I don't even know if I can handle that. That would just be scary, dude. 850 horsepower. I can't imagine that Alpha Omega that has 2000 plus. Like that's just nuts. And some of those ones have like 1100 and stuff like that. Oh, that's crazy. It's already enough uh, a machine on its own. But um, all right, there you guys have it. That was a, a fantastic race there. Yet another one. Ooh, we got a spin. Bugatti Veyron. We already have it, but we'd like to get that if we could. Hi, Hi Veyron. Oh my God. Are you serious? We had three million plus dollar cars and we couldn't get one. Dude, if we... If we would have got that, that Veyron, because we already, we, that was our first wheel spin that we won, we would have got the cash for it. Man, that sucks. All right, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Forza Motorsport 6. Take it easy, guys. Peace out.